方。We ask the coins be brought out. They are symbolic of the prosperity and the wealth. And they represent that you're giving everything, not only your hearts, but all your finances and everything to your family together. We also ask the last will be brought up. Yeah. This cord signifies strength, and it will make you pillars of righteousness and strength and give your children examples to look at, two individuals that are in total unity, and you will lead your family knowing both right and wrong, and they will be able to make proper decisions because of your unity. Thank you. We are gathered today in the presence of God to give thanks for the gift of marriage and to witness the joining together of both Jason and Idy. In various traditions, marriage is a sign of our Creator's intention for wholeness for all of His creation. And out of chaos, God brought together order, a creative purpose that's still at work, and the joining together of two unique persons into one intimate and creative unity that is not only a symbol, but a demonstration of well-being and the purpose of mankind and society. So marriage is truly a celebration of God's work in all creation. The uniting of two individuals from separate families and backgrounds to establish a new family is a memorial event and we are all here to celebrate this with, with them today. The two people join not only their heart, body, and mind, but they join all of us together as one family in unity. Marriage isn't a casual event at all, and this is going to change the rest of your life, and you'll never be the same. We're excited about our faith. You know, one of the many things that both Jason and Idy have told me about through multiple, you know, birthday parties, lunches, and visits, is how important their heritage is. And so we ask today that there is a Bible that's going to be presented to this couple that's going to symbolize their marriage being geared towards God. And Jason, you are called to be the spiritual leader of your family. It's your responsibility to teach your children who God is and how to live for Him. In Deuteronomy, we're told, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And these words that are commanded to us shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk about them when you sit in the house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down to go to bed at night, and when you rise up. And Idy, you need to always support your husband as he leads your family in righteousness. You know, the Bible asks us a question in the 31st chapter of Proverbs. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For she is far more priceless than all the jewels of the world. Today you found your jewel, Jason. The Bible goes on to say that the heart of her husband safely trusts her. And he won't have any lack of gain in his life. And she will do him good all the days of his life. And I believe that this scripture is being fulfilled for you two today. We're seeing y'all come together through some hard times, some good times, the happy times. Let us pray a short prayer. Lord our God, you're the source of all blessing and happiness. We thank you for this joyful event. We thank you for this marriage that we celebrate today. We ask that you give Jason and Idy everything, God, that they asked you for. We ask that you bless them and touch them and guide them. Help them as they, they try to live a life, God, that's pleasing to you. Help them, God, at all the events, all the ups and downs that life has to offer them. And I ask that you fill their home with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to share a few words that Jason and Idy have actually written about each other. Uh, 
I asked them to both send me an email. And I wanted to get an idea, and you know, I was reading these on the plane the other day, and, and some tears kind of filled my eyes, and, and I told Jason I'll promise not to try to cry. But it's exciting. Jason said the first time that he met Idy, they had already shared many emails, texts, and phone calls, and he knew that she was a beautiful woman who shared many of the same beliefs that he has. They're both parents of two children, they're very close in age, so obviously it gave them all kinds of things to talk about given the fact that the kids do so many silly things. But when he said he first saw her, he was floored at how gorgeous she was. He said to himself that she's totally out of his league. But as they began to get to know each other better, he said he began to adore her from everything, how she handles difficult situations, to how kind and gentle she is with all the kids, even though sometimes they make you want to pull your hair out. He said that she's selfless to her family and to her friends, and that she has a giving nature about her. He went on to say, Idy's my best friend. We can talk about anything and everything together, both large and small. And she thinks I'm funny, even when I'm being completely silly, or at least she sweetly smiles and thinks to herself about what a goofball I am. <laughs> but I'm so excited that our families are going to be one and I get to spend the rest of my life with the woman of my dreams. Mm -hmm. Nighty said that when she met Jason, she was attracted by the kindness in his eyes and she soon realized that he had such a warm heart and they did have kids of both the same age. But as they began to get to know each other a little bit better, she began to tell herself, I have met the man that I've prayed for. And I'm in love with Jason for his kindness and his willingness to give even when he's not asked to give. He's shown love and dedication towards his children and his family. And of course, he's handsome too. She said, I deeply love him for everything that he is. And I'm blessed to be loved by such an amazing man. And I will forever be thankful for what God has given me and for this opportunity in my life. And it's going to be a great honor to soon be called Miss James and for our families to become one. Jason and Idy, we're going to ask you to state marriage vows to one another. And if you will, repeat after me. We'll start with the bride first. I, Idy, take you, Jason, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward until death do us part. Jason, repeat after me. I, Jason, take you, Idy, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward until death does us part. The Word of God describes the kind of love that we are supposed to have for each other when it says, love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, love does not brag, it's not arrogant, it doesn't act unbecomingly, it doesn't seek its own, it's not provoked, it does not take into account the wrongs suffered, and it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And most of all, the Bible says that love never fails. Having His love in your hearts, you've chosen to seal the vows of your union by giving and receiving of rings. Though small in size, these rings are very large in significance. They were made of precious metal to remind us that love is not cheap or common, but is indeed costly and should be held dear to us. It's made in a circle, and their design tells us that our love 
must continue and never come to an end. So we must keep it continuous. As you wear these rings, whether you're together or apart, they will be a constant reminders of the promises that you are making today. And we have the bride's ring. And Jason. And Jason, repeat after me. Heidi, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow with all that I am, with all that I have, I honor you. And we have the groom's ring. I repeat after me, Jason, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow with all that I am, with all that I have, I honor you. Before we go on, I would like to have the Bible presented. As we spoke before, the importance of the Word of God in your lives. Jason, it's your responsibility to every day teach your children the Word of God. Heidi, it's your responsibility to pray with your children. Sometimes it's hard, the decisions that the Bible asks us to make in our life. But you have to move on, you have to push through things, and you have to keep that Word of God first in your life. And if you'll center your marriage around the Word of God, then you'll receive many blessings because God honors those who honor His Word and keep His commandments. Jason, you may now greet your bride. Now that Jason and Heidi have given themselves to each other in solemn vows before us and before God as witnesses, they have shown their affection and trust by the giving and receiving of rings and the joining of their hands. By the power vested in me, I pronounce that they are now husband and wife in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jason James. Right. 